So yeah, I'm like the princess and the pea. Like that was always kind of my joke. Um, like, gosh, like, how do you feel that you're like the princess and the pea? And I'm like, I know what that girl's thinking. Like for real, put me on like a mattress. I will feel that pee. <laughs> like, like there's a disturbance. There's a disturbance in the mattress. Hi, I'm Nicole Justine Reed. And welcome back to the HSP, Highly Sensitive People series. We've gone over auditory sensitivity and visual sensitivity, and now we're gonna go over a touch or tactile sensitivity. I have all three, yay. <laughs> but actually it is yay, because I'm way more um, aware and alert of my environment and my body and my needs. And so it's actually been a gift to me. And if you can reframe it that way, life is gonna get a heck of a lot easier for you. Well, hello, Jinji. Gingy, my cat is chiming in with her voice as well. So, all right, touch sensitivity. How do you know if you have a touch sensitivity? Well, the easiest way to tell is how do you react to different fabrics? Uh, when I was actually talking to a client of mine a while ago about this, you know, I sort of mentioned, you know, cause she said she's sensitive and I said, oh, okay, well, you know, do you, you know, does this fabric or that fabric work better for you? And she's like, oh my gosh, I hadn't even thought about that. But yeah, like this, I, I don't like this one. I like this one, right, you know, right? So you may not be so aware that certain things bother you, but there's a sort of a sense of irritation or overload, right? So pay attention to fabrics. So for me, and this is going to blow your mind, cashmere is itchy. It prickles my skin. It feels like a thousand needles just stabbing my skin. And I told, I told my mom this because, you know, there was a Christmas where she, she bought me this beautiful cashmere sweater and I'm like, oh, cool cashmere sweater. And I put it on and I felt like I was going to die. I was like jumping out of my skin. I was like, it's like death daggers all over my body. And she's like, what are you talking about? It's like really soft. And she's like rubbing it. She's like, it's so soft. What are you talking about? I'm like, I don't know what to say. It doesn't feel soft to me. Totally different experiences, right? And my mom being my lovely mom, she, she went and researched it. And then she writes me in this article, she's like, you're right. You know, like X amount of percentage of people like can't stand cashmere. And I'm like, I know I'm right. I'm in my body. It hurt me. <laughs> but it was cool to have that backed up, you know, backup data, you know, that I'm not the only one who experiences this. So cashmere prickles me. I love cotton blends. They're super, super soft. Um, and I'm, I'm just, I'm very sensitive to different kinds of blends and I, I'm actually like kind of compiling my own list so I wouldn't be able to tell you all the different uh, fabrics off the top of my head. I can just tell now by, by touching. Um, but a lot of clothing fabrics, unfortunately, are just not soft. Um, but fortunately, there have been that sort of like um, stretchy soft fabric that's been coming out uh, more popularly recently. So it's a little bit more prevalent than it was before. When I was younger, my mom told me later was that I just refused to wear three quarter length sleeves, like the ones that get cut off like right before the elbow. I couldn't stand it. Like I had to have like a t-shirt or I had to have it at the wrist, but I couldn't do the three quarter thing because I, I think I just want to like kind of pull it down or was that, a, it was just like weird. So pay attention to those little things that that's true for you as well. And also like, you know, the tags, like the, the tags that tell you about like washing and what, whatever, like they would itch the crap out of me. I was just like, Ugh! so she'd have to cut the tags off, but then that would like prick too, right? So it's all about having like, this, well, they have softer tags now or like the kind that are just, you know, printed on or whatever, so that helps too. So what I, I used to do is I would do everything visually, go shopping for clothes. Oh, this is pretty, this is pretty, you know, and then the change room was a freaking nightmare because I'm like, oh God, this is awful and it's too tight here and I can't, right, ah, get it off of my, um, and so now, like the first thing I do is I'll, like if something looks pretty, I will touch it and m more often than not, it's completely eliminated <laughs> through, through the touch. I'm like, there's no way I can wear that fabric. I'm not even gonna try it on because I know myself well with, with that. Another thing is that it was so painful to have my hair brushed. My mom tried to brush my hair one time and it just got caught, you know, in the tangles. And it was just, I remember it actually, this is forever ago, but I remember that day. It was so excruciating. And then I was like, nope, stop. Only I brush my hair. Like, this is ridiculous. Um, same thing with getting my hair cut. Um, she told me apparently like that was Tortureville for me as well. Um, because, you know, people are just kind of rough. They like, you know, they do your, their, you know, the massaging and they pull and stuff and they don't think about how it might be just like really intense if you are a highly sensitive person. Another thing is that the dentist, you know how, I mean, most people just don't like the dentist, but for me, going to the dentist, they, they will use cold water to, to rinse out, right? And they kind of prick and like, it's just, it's like really, ah, it's a whole, it's a whole thing. But then I found this amazing dentist um, who understood 
sensitivity and understood these different things. And it was just this world of difference. I didn't mind going to her at all. It was, it was incredible. It was amazing. She would warm the water up for me because she, she knew that my teeth were super sensitive. And so then if I would, you know, have to, to do the flushing thing or whatever, like it didn't hurt. It was just like, I'm actually rinsing my teeth rather than trying to fight off pain, um, which was a whole different experience. And when I was laying on, you know, a back while well, they're doing the teeth cleaning, which they were very gentle with that too. Um, you know how they, there's like an overhead light and it's like blaring in the eyes. So there's like the eye sensitivity on top of it, right? Um, and she would put the, these like these um, dark uh, shades on so that that wouldn't bother me. And it was just amazing, that world of difference. Those few little touches just made my entire experience normal. I don't even know that that was possible. It was amazing. So um, for me, with touch sensitivity, it's about the actual fabric, so pay attention to that. That's for clothes. That's also for blankets and sheets. So any kind of like that really, like that soft, squishy, um, uh, those blankets, you know, that are like, oh, you just wanna like pet them all day long. Those are amazing, freaking love those. Wool blankets, get them off of me. I can't just go away. Like I can't even handle you right now. I don't know how people <laughs> would deal with that back in the day. If they were highly sensitive and like a, you know, living on the plains of whatever, like and they had a wool blanket, I don't know. Like, what do you do? Freeze to death or like itch to death? I'm not sure. So pay attention to how, how it feels. Touch it on your on your um, hand here, obviously, but also touch it on on the skin that's going to wear it because different parts of you, your body, will have different sensitivities. And for me as well, like I'll, if I've just come out of the bath or a shower, I'm highly sensitive. Like I don't know if like things like you know the skin is all like opening up or whatever, just you know. I don't know, more sensitive. And so my clothes that I thought were super, super soft, like I cannot even put them on my body until after I've like cooled down, dried down. <laughs> like there's very few fabrics that I can wear right after a shower bath. So knowing that, um, you know, I need to give myself time for that sensitivity to, to calm down before I get dressed for the day. Um, pay attention to your sheets, your thread count, the blend. You're, you know, you spend a lot of time in your sheets and if you're uncomfortable and itchy, what the heck? Hi, Gingy. If you're, you know, uncomfortable, it's like, what are you doing to yourself, right? So really pay attention to that and get yourself some luxurious sheets that feel amazing for you. And I can't tell you what those are because you need to just pay attention to your own body and what really works for you. Because everyone's gonna have the different levels. So um, sheets, towels, um, uh, clothes, and then pillows. So pillows, like throw pillows. There are so many beautiful throw pillows out there that have like a ton of itchy, spiky, super uncomfortable stuff, you know, with decor all over them. Doesn't bother most people. They're like, whatever, it's a pillow, I'm gonna lean on it. And I'm like, get that thing away from me. Like, I, I'm not touching that at all. So if I buy um, a pillow, like I need to know that I can lean against it like in a tank top if my, you know, if my the back of my skin is gonna be touching it and I'm gonna be sitting on the couch, am I gonna, can I just sit on my couch and like relax? Or is it gonna be a whole big thing where I have to cover up the pillow before I can actually sit down and relax, right? So just creating a home sanctuary environment where you don't have to think about it. You pick up the blanket, you know it's gonna work for you. You pick out the outfit, you know it's gonna work for you. You sit on the pillow, you know it's gonna work for you, right? And then when you're out and about, it's a little bit different, obviously, but if you have like a jacket or a sweater or something like that that you can carry with you, um, especially if you have like um, bare shoulders or something like that, and then you're sitting on someone's chair that's uncomfortable, you can always put that on as a barrier layer. Um, and that way, you know, you're, um, you won't be suffering, basically, because <laughs> that's what that is. Okay, let's see, what else do we have here? So we have fabrics, um, paying attention to fabrics for sure. And then um, textures in general. So for me, I really cannot handle <laughs> having sticky hands. Like, I freaking hate it. Like, I mean, it's gross probably for most people, but like, distractingly so for me. Um, and also dry hands. And so um, I always make sure I wash my hands and I also make sure I put lotion on my hands a lot to keep them really moist. And I'm very careful about the kinds of lotions that I put on because lotions themselves have different textures. So pay attention to what feels really good for you and what the after effect of the lotion is because sometimes it will leave a residue that's just totally unpleasant. So then like, why are you using that lotion? Um, and then you know those antimicrobial, um, you squirt into your hands and you're like, oh, you know, it evaporates. Maybe it works for you, and if it does, great. But for me, I cannot stand that stuff. Um, there's a smell sensitivity with that for me, which we'll go into in the next video. There's also that that drying out of the hands. It's like my hands just start to like kind of shrink. Like I can feel the skin like shriveling as the stuff dries up, and then my hands just get really, really dry afterwards. So 
it is actually more unpleasant for me to use that stuff than than to not. And so I like, <laughs> you know, we were on a cruise <laughs> recently where like there were like the people with the, like they're just like everywhere trying to spray you, and I'm like running away from the people. I'm like, don't you touch me with that thing? <laughs> like I'm like I can't. I will go to the bathroom and I'll wash my hands if you need me to wash my hands randomly in the day. But like get that thing away from me. Like make it make it stop. <laughs> so I know that the certain things just that don't, absolutely don't work for me. So this is about you knowing yourself and um, just compiling a list like in your head and then you'll just be able to kind of, you know, know what works and doesn't. Let's see, what else? Um, yes, also I carry a whole like care kit with me in my purse. Um, so I carry, I, well, I don't do it right now. I used to carry lotion with me all the time. I live in a more humid environment uh, these days and need less lotion, which is freaking exciting for my skin. But I do always carry chapstick with me, some kind of lip balm, because it is um, distracting for me and, and, and just like very, um, like, uh, well, like overstimulating and painful, I guess, you know, if my lips are not um, nourished and um, whatever, like I need chapstick. So I have my chapstick with me. Also I carry like a tiny little thing of floss, like a little travel size thing of floss, because there's nothing worse than like being in a restaurant and then you have some food stuck in your teeth and like that pressure, you know, it's like, yeah, it's irritating, but that pressure, it's almost like my skull is gonna explode because I can just feel that tiny piece of food between my teeth. So yeah, I'm like the princess in the pea. Like that was always kind of my joke. Um, like, gosh, like, how do you feel about you're like the princess in the pea? And I'm like, I know what that girl's thinking. Like for real, put me on like a mattress. I will feel that pee. <laughs> <laughs> like there's a disturbance, there's a disturbance in the mattress. Um, and then I also carry around a nail file and uh, because if my nails, you know, break, I mean, this is also like beauty tips, but I do it for comfort because if there's like a raggedy nail, you know, it's just, it's like, it's just sensorially, is that a word? Really um, jarring and uncomfortable for me. So I just like to take care of myself. So I have this like, like little kit that I have that I carry around. Um, and also, I don't know if this really goes with tactile sensitivity, but on a side note, I do get motion sickness as well. And so I carry around those little C, C bands that you can, they're like these little, um, stretchy wristbands that have a little acupressure point things, you know, so you can put them. So if you get kind of sick, those nausea bands, right? So you can use them for motion sickness or a pregnant woman will use them as a home, like homeopathic or natural kind of remedy for sickness. Um, and even when picking those out, I had to pick, because there's a lot of different kinds, I had to pick out the kind that had very soft <laughs> um, fabric that would go around my wrist and that would hold it tightly enough to really push on the thing, but not too tight because too much compression doesn't feel good either, right? Um, and so it's, so it's just about like noticing all those little details. And speaking of pressure, um, for me, if my shoelaces are on, if I'm wearing sneakers, my shoelaces are on, like one is kind of tight and one is like looser, like I, like I cannot stand it. I need to stop and like even them out. Be and I need it because I need the pressure to be even for both my feet because I really, I can feel it. Same thing with socks. If like they're getting bunched or rolled up, like ugh, that's like, ugh, what the, that's just aggravating. And so I take the time now, like rather than like, oh, whatever, like I'll deal with it later. Like I'm, you know, it's, it's, it's so distracting and it's a lack of self care if I don't stop and like fix it. So I take care of myself and I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to even this out. And then I'm back in the present moment without this overstimulation constantly on my feet. Um, so if you are like me and you are the princess in the pea and you can feel so many things, um, pay attention to how the things feel for you as you're moving through your day. When you're touching different fabrics and different, you know, textures, you know, what appeals to you and makes you feel delighted, what really irritates you and like on what kind of a scale, like what's a 10 of irritation for you, what's a five, you know, what are the must avoids and what are the ways that you can be proactive about preventing that or about neutralizing it? Um, because this is just really about like you not being in pain. You don't need to be in pain and you don't need to be overstimulated all day long. So you don't have to wear fabrics that hurt your skin. Just don't wear them, right? Find ones that are freaking amazing for you instead. Um, and if somebody gives you a gift, and this has happened so many times to me, they give you a gift and it's itchy, you know, it's like, don't, you don't have to wear the scarf around your neck, you know, when you're just wanting to like scratch yourself the whole time, right? Um, you can, you can thank them, you can receive the gift, right? But you don't need to wear it. And the best thing is really just to let everybody know so that they can give you the right gifts because people want to give you gifts that you're going to love. And so now my whole family knows that I am super sensitive with my skin. And so basically everyone in the family is not going to bother buying me clothes except my mom who's like a total trooper and will spend hours and hours trying to find the softest clothing. Love you, mom. <laughs> so, um, 
you know, but, but now she knows. And so I can easily say, this is too itchy. This is soft. And like the first thing that she's going to say to me is like, I bought you this clothes, but I don't know if they're soft enough. Right. Cause she's aware. And so we can have that conversation openly and without any hurt feelings because we've designed it. She's trying to get me something that I love and I'm, I'm trying to be happy in my body here, right? Which is what we're all, we're all trying to do. So hopefully this is giving you some awareness and some tips. These are some real life examples about um, tactile sen sensitivity that I've experienced and some things I've done in my own life to make it better for myself. If you have any more ideas or suggestions or um, need more support with this area, please write in the comments below and I'd be happy to address them as best I can. See you on the next video for the smell sensitivity. See you then.